Father, help us learn how to love you, O oh God. Help us learn how to serve you, O oh God. Loose every religious spirit in this place in the name of Jesus. And we will forever give you the praise. All the honor and glory goes to you. And it's in Jesus' precious and mighty name that we pray. And let this house say amen. Let this house say amen. Let this house say amen. Let the church say amen. Thank God for that fervent prayer. You know, God has a way of confirming his word. And, and I don't know if you all saw it, but if you actually were paying just a little bit of attention to the praise team. They're all wearing the same shirt. And on that shirt, it says H-O-P and E, hope, hope. Did anybody else see that besides me? And listen, this is how God backs up his word. The scripture on tonight is taken from Jeremiah chapter 29 beginning with verse 11 and listen listen to this it says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future. I'm not going to take a text and preach, but I just, if I were, this is, I would ask this question or at least make this statement. Somebody in 24 needs to say, there is hope for me. Anybody else in here believe that today? There is hope. You need to make this personal and say, there is hope for me. That's according to God's word on tonight. Is there anybody else in here that believe God's word? Is there anybody else in here besides me and pastor and the praise team and the preachers that are excited about God's word? Come on, is there anybody in here tonight that knows that it was God's word that kept you all in 20? Is there anybody else in here who would be honest and say, if it had not been for God's word, you wouldn't even be here tonight. I wouldn't be here tonight. Somebody tell your neighbor, thank God for the word. Amen. As our praise team comes, amen. As our praise team comes, we just want you to know that we are excited. We want to indeed welcome everybody that's here. Already, just know that you're welcome here at Highland Christian Center. We are known for a place that knows how to praise. Amen? Amen. Come on in here. We are not ashamed to give God praise. And so I want to welcome everybody to this watch night service and we are happy and thrilled that you've chosen to be here and worship with us on this last evening of 20 and 2023. And as we have come together to close out this year, we do so with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise upon our lips, knowing that we serve an awesome and mighty God. Philippians 3 and 13 and 14 states, Brothers, I count myself do not have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. To all of our visitors that are online, Go ahead and type in the VIP chat, hello, or, or hallelujah, or praise the Lord. Anything to let us know we're there. We want you to know we thank God for your presence. And for those that are here tonight, we are still aware of COVID's presence being in and around us. But we want you to know 
uh, that we believe God for our health and our healing. So if you need to wear masks as a precaution, then please do whatever you need to do in that respect. But we don't want you to be limited in any way in your praise unto God. And as the praise team comes now and continues to bless our heart, tell somebody, I'm glad. I'm glad. Oh, you don't believe it. Tell them, I'm glad. I'm glad. To be in the service. One more time. Come on, tell them again. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. One more time. I almost felt like saying that. I told y'all we're going hard and going home tonight. Come on, jump to your feet. Let's church a little bit more. Come on, everybody, on your feet. Come on and clap your hands.
everybody say now. My everything. My everything. My everything. Look at your name. My everything. I can't tell you my testimony. My everything. But all I can tell you. My everything. Is he's my everything. My everything. All I can tell you. My everything. Say that he's my everything. My everything. Every time I call him. My everything. He's a right on. tonight. Somebody ought to show them some love. Amen. And I told, I told Minister Lamont just now, he gonna have to save some a little bit because he still got to preach. He working hard tonight. Amen. Y'all be praying for him. My God. Aren't you glad you're here tonight? Doesn't it feel good to be in the house of the Lord? You ought to just shake your shoulders a little bit and say, ooh, feel kind of good to be in here tonight. Amen. Thank God. Listen, we're going to continue in our worship experience on tonight, and we have our elder, our senior elder, Elder Curtis Miller. He's going to come and do prayer in his own special way. And listen, after he does prayer, I want you to start praying now for our first speaker of the night. Our first speaker of the night is Minister Yolanda Denton. And so, amen. And so be praying for her as, as Elder Miller prays. Be praying for her as well because we need a word from the Lord from all of our speakers on tonight. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right, come on, church. Let's say amen. amen. You, you know what's so amazing is this. Today, the world, especially in this country, they're having a party. Everybody's celebrating. But you know what? Let me tell you something. The greatest celebration that you could have is being in the house of the Lord thanking God for what he's done. Just look back 11 months ago. In 31 days, he brought you through. He brought you through. Nobody but him. And if I'm going to be in a party, it's going to be a party for the Lord. But listen, before, before, I have, before I say a word of prayer, we've got a young man with a testimony. All of us should have a testimony. But you know what? It's a blessing when we can come together and give God the glory. But there needs to be a testimony in the house to show you. I'm going to call this young man up, Giorgio. 
And listen to what he says. He'll let you know it's nothing but God is still blessing. God is truly my everything. Uh, Wednesday, last Wednesday, I was just doing my regular old business in Mall 205. As I entered into Mall 205, uh, T-Mobile. If I didn't enter into Mall 205, T-Mobile, two seconds earlier, I would have got shot. Because there was a shooting two seconds later as I was taking care of my business. <laughs> I just thank God for his protection. See, church, that lets us know that God is still in the blessing business. Is, is Kevin still here? He had to leave. But let me show you something. Pastor and I were standing over there, and Kevin was there. He's another one of our members. He come up. He said, Elder, God told me to quit smoking. I want to quit smoking. He took his cigarettes, and he laid them up on the altar. He laid them up on the altar. Let me tell you something. God is still healing and delivering. God is still, and if we remember what the word said this morning, where is God? Where is the spirit of the Lord? It's within us. And if you allow God to work within you, then let me tell you something. You'll be blessed. But you know what? Before I have this prayer, God put something on my heart. In order for you to be blessed in the future, you got to be thankful for the past. Okay? And what God said, he told me, he said, listen, when you go before my people, he said, I want about 20 of them just to say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Elder Pullins. And I, I call Ella Pullins to help me because he's a younger man. He can run much faster, <laughs> you know. But listen, what I want you to do, he's going to go around to 20 different people. And all God wants you to say is thank you, Jesus. But say it with meaning. Say it with heart. 20 people. 20 people. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. you, know, together especially, let me tell you something. That shakes heaven. That shakes heaven because he wants us to know that he's going to bless us. But he also want to hear say thank you. He also want to hear say thank you. And that's the thing that we got to do. We're getting ready to go into a new year. A new year. And not a new year of cursings, but a new year of blessings. And it's all what you think. When things come against you, don't let it control you. You control it. Because you have the power of God to do that. You have the power of God to do it. And let me tell you something. It's a reason why God called all of us in here to go through 2024. Because he wants to be seen. He wants the world to know about him. And he's using us to do it. And he's using us to do it. So we are, we are truly blessed. When you stop and think about the almighty God, the creator of everything, him dwelling in you. You know, I don't care where I turn, what I do, he's there. And all we got to do is just call upon him. Lord, thank you. Thank you. And I guarantee you, saints, let this new year be a year to where you and God can walk together and you can see your blessings. And always remember, if you want a blessing, you got to give a blessing. Pray for someone else because it's a blessing. I'm going to ask that you bow your heads around and have a quick word of prayer with you. This evening, Father God, we your children, we thank you. We thank you because you're God and God all by yourself. Father God, it wasn't us that created ourselves. It was you that created us. And you created us, Father God, for your purpose, for your will. And Father God, your word says that you made us in your image and likeness, Father God. Being sons and daughters of God, Father God, you've already given us the victory. The victory that you've given us, Father God, we're getting ready to go into this new year, Father God, new year of hope and blessings, Father God. Father God, you said old things have passed away, and behold, all things are new, Father God. Father God, we're going into 2024, Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Holy Ghost. 
Father God, we just want to thank you because we know, Father God, with you we can do all things. We thank you for this house, Father God. We thank you for the under shepherd of this house, Father God. Father God, we ask, Father God, that you start, Father God, with Dr. Nalen and work down, Father God. Father God, do a new thing in him, Father God. Do a new thing in us, Father God. Humble us, Father God. Humble us, Father God, to be respected of one another, Father God. Father God, there's no big ass a little you and you, Father God. We all are your children in the same, Father God. Father God, I ask, Father God, that you, Father God, bless this house, Father God. Continue to do new things. Continue to send souls in from the northeast and south, Father God, that they must, must be saved to say, what must I do to be saved in the name of Jesus? Father God, we know, Father God, that you're God, that you're a true God. And Father God, you will not lie. You cannot lie, Father God. If we stand firm on your, per on your promises, Father God, the word that's in the Bible, Father God, Father God, if we stand firm to the Holy Ghost, Father God, Father God, you said the Holy Ghost will lead and guide us into all things, Father God. The Holy Ghost will keep us, Father God. Father God, I ask, Father God, that you bless this house. Father God, not only on the outside, but on the inside. Start on the inside now, Father God. Take away all of our bickering, Father God. Father God, take it away, Father God. Father God, show us, Father God, how we're to love one another, Father God, that you may be seen, Father God. In everything that we do, Father God, we give you the honor and the glory. I pray, Father God, for every father. I pray, Father God, that you touch every father, that we all become the leaders that you have called us to be, the head of our households, Father God. I pray for every mother. Father God, those virtuous women, Father God, bless them, Father God. Father God, we need each other, Father God. And Father God, Paul said it so well, we're one body. One body that needs to function the way you created us to be, Father God. That's humbling ourselves with one another, respecting one another, Father God, and uplifting and praying for one another. So, Father God, we know without a doubt, Father God, that new blessings is going to come in this house, Father God. Father God, right now, Father God, I speak it, Father God. House notes will be paid, Father God. Father God, there'll be new cars, Father God. Father God, you will meet the need of your people, Father God. Your word says we have not because we ask not. And Father God, we're asking in the name of Jesus, Father God. Bless every ministry, Father God. We thank you for every ministry, Father God. The praise team, Father God. The ones that you use to usher in your Holy Spirit, Father God. Keep watch over, Father God. Bless them, Father God. The elders council, Father God, that you call together, Father God, to give sound wisdom, Father God, with the under shepherd, Father God. The mothers, Father God. Oh, Father God, those praying mothers that watch over the house, Father God. The deacons and deaconess, Father Father God, the children's church, Father God, Father God, those that go out and feed on the burn side, Father God, Father God, none of this is our will, but it's your will, Father God, and we pray right now, Father God, that you continue to do great things in our life, Father God, that you be glorified, that you be glorified, Father God, let 2024, Father God, be a year of new testimonies, Father God, Father God, let your people come in and tell one another how you bless, Father God, how you remove those stepping stones out the way, Father God, how you've opened up doors. Father God, Father God, the man in clothes, Father God. So, Father, we thank you right now, Father God. And, Father God, as we go through this celebration, this party of good times, Father God, we say thank you, Father God. Continue to bless us, Father God. Bless every minister, Father God. Bless our ministers, Father God. So, Father, we love you. We praise you. Bless the children. Watch over and keep them, Father God. Let them not fall into deaf ears, Father God. Let no hurt or harm come to them, Father God. Bless them, Father God. And Father God, we will always, we will always give you the glory and the praise. It's in your precious son, Jesus' name. That name that's above all names. That name that delivers and heals. That name that will comfort you. Lord Jesus, we just thank you. So, Father God, we give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, and it is so. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. And if we truly are thankful, why don't you just take a moment in your own heart and just tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. Amen. Good morning. 
and welcome to Highland Christian Center, the right place where we are building community and changing lives. We're so blessed that you chose to worship with us online today, and we believe that God has something in store for you. So stay tuned. At this time, I will share with you some Highland highlights. As our campus will be closed this Sunday and Monday, the following events have been canceled. 10 a.m. in-person service, 6 p.m. evening service, our talks with doctors Gina and Amanda, and our annual Martin Luther King Day event. We pray that you will stay warm and safe during the winter weather. God bless. As we conclude this period of spiritual discipline, the Daniel Fast comes to an end on Sunday, January 21st. We hope that this time of focus, reflection, and dedication has brought spiritual growth and renewal. Thank you to everyone who participated. May the lessons learned during this fast continue to inspire and guide us in the days ahead. God bless you. Join us for Burnside Feed on Tuesday, January the 16th at 6 p.m. It's an opportunity to come together in community and support. For more details or to get involved, reach out to Deacon Charles Jennings or contact the church office at 503-287-9567. Let's make a positive impact together. Men, start your Saturday right with the men's breakfast on January the 20th at 9 a.m. Join them for a hearty meal and meaningful fellowship. For more information or to RSVP, contact Minister Eric Garcia by email. It's an excellent opportunity to connect with fellow men in the community. They look forward to seeing you there. Exciting news! Life Group Training is on the horizon, set to commence in February. Be sure to sign up for this enriching experience that promises growth and community connection. Stay tuned for the official date and time announcements. For further details and registration, reach out to Minister Elsie Butler by email. Let's journey together towards spiritual enrichment and stronger connection in the upcoming Life Group Training. Exercise your right to vote for HCC Treasurer nominee LaQuita Colfer. The voting period ends on Friday, January the 19th. Make your voice heard and contribute to the decision-making process for our community. If you have any questions or need assistance, please reach out to Rachel Jackson by email. Your participation is crucial in shaping the future of our church. Cast your vote and be a part of this important decision. Thank you for joining us here at Highland, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Remember, God has something in store for you today, right here at Highland, the right place, where we are building community and changing lives. Have an amazingly blessed week. get to participate because it is offering time. Amen. Or at least I'm excited about it. Pastor, you're excited about it. Come on, everybody, let's stand on our feet as we prepare for our offering on tonight. And the scripture is Proverbs 11:24 that reminds us one person gives freely. Everybody stand on your feet. Yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but, become, but comes to poverty. So if you are here on tonight, we want you to be able to receive your blessing by way of giving. In fact, this is, listen, the last offering of 20 and 23. Amen. And so we want to go out uh, blessing the Lord as we entered and the Lord has kept us these years. Amen. So we're going to follow the instructions from uh, the ushers to come and to give our final offering on tonight for 20 and 23. Amen. Greetings, HCC. Pastor Sean Nalen here. I am here uh, hunkered down with no power in the house as I uh, greet you today. Um, here in Beaverton, Oregon, but I want you to know I am so disappointed that we could not worship together in person this morning, but thank you all for tuning in online. Uh, thank you for being a part of our worship service. A special thanks to uh, Minister Darius Miniweather for his great support uh, in putting all of this together. Uh, he is simply a genius and a master producer. 
And so I, I just want to encourage you during this uh, time of giving and this offering uh, that you can go to www.hcclive.com or you can go to Planning Center to give. Your giving is what keeps us, what sustains us, what allows us to do the great ministry we are doing and great ministry we are. For instance, we have the Burnside Feed coming up January 16th. Uh, we have also other great missions and outreaches coming uh, down the line in the coming month with our church anniversary, with our uh, Resurrection Sunday services. Uh, we're going to be bringing in guest singers and so forth. So we are looking forward to doing great ministry at Hyde, but we need your continued support as we sustain our great church, as we prepare to do great ministry in 2024. Your tithes and offering make such a difference. Well, I want to thank each of you uh, on behalf of our leadership team uh, for giving to Highland Christian Center. Again, I am so sorry uh, that we could not be there. Madeline and I said our love to you. We could not be there today. And MLK is one of my heroes. And we stand on his shoulder. Uh, freedom uh, is still in our grasp. We're not there yet as Americans, but we are working towards equality and justice for all. So I just want to thank you again for attending our online worship service. Thank you again for your giving of your financial uh, tithes and offering your support. Your support. And again, uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Now, uh, tomorrow services, January 15th, are also canceled due, due to inclement weather. And that will be rescheduled. All right. Well, get ready for the Word of God. Uh, get ready for some more uh, MLK uh, special things. So we look forward uh, to talking to you soon and seeing you uh, at Wednesday Night Live and then the Burnside Feed, Wednesday Night Live, and see you next week. Well, God bless you uh, for uh, all that you do. And may He keep you and cause His face to shine down. Take care. Wednesday Night Live is back. The one and only Bishop Stuart Miniweather is teaching the class. And I would like to see no less than 25 of you out this Wednesday night. Can you do that? Amen, somebody. Because you asked me, you said, Pastor, can we keep Wednesday night going during the summer? Well, now I need you to come out and support Wednesday night. Amen, somebody. The youth are not meeting yet. We have the surge. If you are a new member, Elder Williams is here. If you are a new believer, you have Minister Mama. You have Minister Judith Randall. So come on out. And if you are aspiring to be a minister, we have five people in class iteration number three. Come on, give the Lord a praise. These are people who have made up their minds to answer the call of God. And they have to put up with me every week for an hour and a half. You only get to hear me for 45 minutes. But they get me ramble for an hour and a half. That's tough work. Giorgio, Minister Giorgio, loved me so much that he took the class twice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we have an ordination board, and these will be meeting the ordination board, Lord willing, in 23. Amen, somebody. And so far, 20 ministers have been licensed at Highland Christian Center in the last three and a half years. Four have been ordained in the last three and a half years. And so why am I sharing this with you? Is because we are a robust church that comes together under the anointing of the Lord. And the message today deals with the blessings 
and the anointing of the Lord. It's something about coming together. Last week, we talked about the fresh wind. By the way, didn't the choir do a great job today, the praise team, the band, thank you, uh, Kevin and Joe, and thank you uh, to Evangelist Cheryl again, and thank you, Bishop Miniweather, for hosting the service today, and thank you, Darius, who's behind the scenes getting all of our technology, Minister Miniweather, online. Amen, somebody. And then the ushers and the deacons and the parking ministry and the greeters and the health team check-in. This is a big operation. Somebody say amen. amen. When you have over 450 people on our roll that we know of, it takes a lot to make the church move. Amen, somebody. And I want to thank all of the leaders. But each of us, the leaders, me, we all need a fresh wind. And, and, and I, I believe that when we talked about it, if you tuned in last week, we were shut down for a day. But if you tuned in last week, it was live messaging. The, the resurrection of Jesus had invigorated the disciples who were first behind closed doors. But then the resurrection came and invigorated them and encouraged them to, to, to go out and wait for the Lord. They waited for the Holy Spirit. They saw Jesus ascend at the 40th day. But there is a purpose in a time for the Lord to send the fresh wind. Someone say the fresh wind. There is no time for the church or Highland Christian Center to be behind closed doors. This is no time in America and in the world for the church to deny the power of the Holy Spirit. This is no time for us with monkeypox, COVID-19, malice and hatred, disease and gossip and slandering. This is no time for the church to deny the transformative power of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit comes as a sign of fresh wind. Wind has power. Wind moves things. Wind changes the direction and the flow of things. The wind, in this sense, was described in the Bible as a mighty rushing wind or a violent wind. Why? Why? Because there's power. Someone say power in the wind. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. That's why, I, can I stop right there? That's why I believe in coming together in one place. So I can receive the power in order to go out into the world. It's, it's coming together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. That's Acts, the second chapter, verses 1 and 2. And then last week we talked about the signs of the wind. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled, everybody say filled, with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. You remember the confusion? And they said, I can't understand why the Medes are speaking in Parthian. Why the Parthians are speaking in Egyptian. Why the Egyptians are speaking in Aramaic. Why the Aramaic are speaking in Hebrew. It was because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And they understood that they were worshiping God and speaking in other tongues. The signs of the wind. The Bible says that day they thought they were drunk. And Peter said to them, these men are not drunk. It's only 9 a.m. in the morning. Now, I know some of you, I'm not condemning you. You may get a drink early in the morning. But Peter said, no, they're not drunk. 
Oh, no. But they are drunk and filled with the Spirit of the Lord. These men have been baptized and saturated. These 120 have been saturated. And that day, 3,000 repented and gave their lives to Christ. And so we talked about the power of the wind last week. We talked about the signs of the wind. Then we talked about the results of the wind. I'm just catching you up. And then after Peter gave his sermon, he says, they asked him, they said, Peter, what shall we do? Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise, listen to this people, the promise is to you and your children and all who are afar off. That's you and me, all afar off. As man as the Lord, uh, our God will call, as many as the Lord our God will call, be saved Whoa. from this perverse generation. The Lord wants us to be saved from this perverse generation, a generation where everything goes. A generation in those days where it was uh, riotous living, debauchery, gossiping, lying, cheating, and stealing. I'm here to tell you it's the same generation today, but maybe worse. Ah, anything goes. Everything goes. I did it my way. I'm going to do it my way. I don't care what you say, but I'm here to tell you we need a fresh wind. Somebody say, we need a fresh wind. We need a fresh wind from the Lord. So the early church understood the fresh wind. The early church understood what God was doing. The other night I was speaking at the revival we had at Highland. And in this revival, I talked about the wheat and the tares. Mm -hmm. Matthew 13. And how even among us right now, there might be some tares sown among the wheat. And they ask, they ask, how did those tares get among the wheat? The Bible says, while you were sleeping, the enemy came in and sowed the tares at night. And I got news for you. I preached the message, wake up church. The church needs to wake up. Can you hug somebody and say, wake up. Open your eyes and see what's happening around you. See what's going on. See how we can easily be deceived by the tares that are among the wheat. But God said, wait a minute, should I go and pull them out and uproot them? He said, no, don't uproot them. Just love them. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Because in the end, the Lord will do the separating. Somebody say it's in the end that the Lord will do the separating. And so in the world, we have some tares and some wheat. In our state, in America, in the country, we have some tares and some wheat. In the church. Unfortunately, we have some tares and some wheat. But I'm here to tell you, we're going to trust in the Lord and he will see us through this perverse generation. And so quickly, quickly, look in your text in verse 42 again in Acts, the second chapter, and verse 43. There are two quick things I want to leave with you today. And number one, and then I'll cover the rest in the coming weeks. Oh, and by the way, we have baptism next week. And so for those who are desiring to be baptized, I need you to contact Elder Williams or Sister Myrtle Talley. And let's pray a special prayer for Myrtle. I know you're watching right now, Myrtle, our receptionist. We love you and we pray that God will heal you and bless you. She'll be like, Pastor, you forgot about me. Myrtle, you know I can't forget about you. <laughs> Anybody who meets Myrtle can't forget about Myrtle. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Myrtle is a loving lady. Number one, they were devoted to the teaching. 
If you remember three years ago when I got at Highland, came to Highland, three and a half years ago, I talked about the unstoppable church. I talked about these very same principles that if we don't get into the teaching of the word of God, we cannot grow and do what God has designed for Highland to do. And then individually what we are designed to do. So there's corporate and there's personal and individual. But they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, which we did today, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many signs and wonders or wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Can I share with you today that too many in the church are not committed to focusing on the word. Yes, we have a relationship with Jesus, but our limited knowledge shows because we don't indulge in the word. Mm -hmm. See, and, and when you have little knowledge, it equals little power. So in order to embrace the Holy Spirit, to in order to embrace the fresh wind and the fresh anointing, it begins with the word. Somebody say, it begins with the word. See, it, there has to be a commitment to the word. Too many uh, churches create their own doctrine that is contrary to the word of God. And this causes the body of Christ to be confused, scattered, not on one accord. Many researchers who are tracking the trends in the church are saying, we have moved away from the word. You remember when you and I uh, were in our toddler age, in our adolescent age, we understood who Noah was. We understood who Moses was. We could probably name the 12 tribes of Israel. But today, most of us cannot name the 12 disciples, let alone the 12 tribes. Our children don't even know who was the mighty warrior Gideon, for instance. Our children say, Moses, who is Moses? What does that mean? We used to know that in Sunday school. That's why I'm so proud of our youth department with 13 workers and, and with 60 plus children registered ministering to our children. Come on, give it up for the Lord. Minister Lisa Brooks, we give you guys a shout out. But I was reading an article that surveyed some young people. They were on fire for Jesus. They, young people love music, don't they? They love to worship the Lord. If they're following Jesus, they, they got the worship down. But one thing the young people are missing is the word yet too. I know you're our singles leader. And so when you do your singles group and y'all bowling and y'all hiking and gliding all over the world, I want you to make sure you say the pastor said we got to read some scriptures before we jump off this mountain. You hear that? That's the Lord. No. <laughs> So make sure the word is in everything we do. Because when they asked them, these young people, they couldn't name any of the 12 tribes of Israel. They didn't understand who Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was. They could name a few of the prophets. Didn't know who the disciples and apostle was. But I'm, I'm just going to tell you, if you start asking them about the latest Come on, somebody. Hip-hop, the latest music, the latest beats. Amen. They can name them all. And that's just like us today. Some of us don't know the word like we need to know the word. But if I ask you what's the latest thing happened on days of our lives, is that still on days of our lives? <laughs> I got to get up to ski. <laughs> Maybe, uh, uh, wait, help me out, people. Uh, uh, what's out there today that we are watching? Oh, the Tyler Perry sisters. Y'all watching that? You probably can tell me all of the characters. You can tell me all of the NBA stars on your favorite team. 
Some of y'all play like you're looking at the scriptures when I'm speaking. But during the NFL season, I know a fact you are looking at fantasy leagues. <laughs> Am I right about it? <laughs> Thank you, Edwin, for being honest. Looking at how my team is doing, how my running back is doing. No, get in the word. Come on, somebody. But I'm trying to tell you that our society has changed. Amen, somebody. I remember when I was preaching in Italy, and I, and I, and I introduced the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed reminds the early church. It was the church fathers and, and the leaders. They said, hey, Christianity is blowing up. It is going all over the place, but what we need to do is have a decree of a set doctrine. And that became what's called the Nicene Creed at the Treaty of Nicene. But when I put that on the screen, this is way back in Italy, they were upset with me. They said, what is the pastor doing? He's trying to tell us some foreign stuff. But it was the word of God that we're not, we're not familiar with the early church. We're not familiar with the early doctrines. And so we need to understand the basics of the word of God. You may know the latest streaming. You may know the, the latest music stars, what Beyonce's new song is talking about. Look at that. I got a witness over there. Thank you. Uh, all of that is fine. NHL, NBA, boxing, all of that, champ. I know you're a big boxing fan, and Anthony Joshua will take out Usyk this time. I believe it. Amen, somebody. <laughs> But whether you know all of that, that's fine. But what I need the church to know, what God wants us to know, is his word. Whew. The word of God is revealed in scriptures. Jesus actually is the word. So the more I get closer to Jesus, the more word I get. And the word for word in the Greek is logos. Everyone say logos. L-O-G-O-S. And what logos means, it means Christ revealed. And I want the word to saturate my soul. We have to be careful because it is the word that will draw people. Because I hear preachers saying, well, I won't focus too much on the word. I just want everyone to feel good. I cannot preach feel-good messages, but I can preach the good news because the gospel is good news. So if that's the kind of feel-good you're talking about, I'm always preaching good news. And I'm preaching feel-good because I'm preaching the gospel that sets us free because it is the word that will save us. It is the word that will convict us. It is the word that will transform us. It is the word that will renew us. We ever wonder why I can't get the victory in my life? Get in the word. We have too many other things that take priority over studying the word. That's why we're launching our life groups again. And our launch before COVID-19, we had 25 life groups across the city. We're going to launch them again with Elder Charles Pulling, Minister Elsie Butler. They will be doing training. We invite you to sign up to be a life group leader. If God is calling you to lead and teach the word, get in the word. We have Bible study on Wednesday nights. Get in the word. We have the journey. Get in the word. We have the surge. Get in the word. Somebody say, get in the word. Oh, in most growing churches, the word is the centerpiece of the service. It's the word. Yes, we, we can have all of the music and, and the dancing and all of the praise, but let me tell you, it is the word that will draw. It is the word that will save. It is the word that will convict. It is the word that will transform our lives. And that's why in our mission statement at Highland, we said we are a word-centered, multi-generational, multicultural church. And that's what we need today 
is more of the word. And the word will give us life and life abundantly. It is the word of God that will change us. It is the word of God where I find my healing. It is the word of God where I find my deliverance. Last night, I was at an event with Sister Annette Ramsey and her father, Elder Leroy Ramsey. Let's give him a hand. 90 years old. Solid Rock Church of God in Christ preacher. And let me tell you, that man has the anointing on him. Hallelujah. And he preached last night. But you know what? There was a woman who sang. And she said, before he got up, she said something that just broke in my spirit. Listen to this. She said, encourage yourself. And I thought, oh, I said, oh, my God. Y'all know that song, Encourage Yourself. And that's the problem with today's song. Many of today's song, they move from encouragement and the word to just some music and the beat. And they take Jesus out of the mix. But if you sing and preach the word, it will transform you. And when that woman started singing, you have to encourage yourself. My God, the spirit came upon me. And I started thinking, I said, wait a minute, what does she mean, encourage yourself? I start thinking about Joshua when the Lord said, do not be discouraged, for I am with you. I will not forsake you. I said, what does she mean when she said, you got to encourage yourself. I can't do it any justice. Oh, my God. I start thinking that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. God is in control. Why? Because all scripture, his word, all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So can I break it down for you for a second? All scripture, somebody say all scripture. All the word is God breed. I cannot pick which pieces of the word I don't want to follow. I got to follow the entire word. I got to say, Lord, it's everything. Mm. And it's useful for teaching. It's useful for rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Not my righteousness, JJ, but the righteousness of the Lord. So that the servants of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. If we're going to be a mobilized church, a church that's going on outside of the church walls and the doors as we did on Good Friday. Remember, we went out witnessing. Instead of just coming to Good Friday, we went on the streets. We did prayer walks in the city in the last couple of years. And this is what we need to do because when we get in the word, we will be mobilized and equipped to go out and speak the word. When the devil rise up against you, you can say it's the word of God. It is written. How many of you can say it is written? That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Can you say it is written? It is written that I am the head and not the tail. Look at your neighbor and say it is written that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Look at another one and tell him it is written hallelujah that no greater love than a man knows in this than a man who will lay down his life for a friend tell him it is written that I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened me tell him it's written hallelujah that I'm victorious tell him it's written that I'm a winner tell him it's written that I'm gonna make it tell him it's written that God has my back tell him it's written read 2 Timothy 3 16 and 17 see and then we have to know that we have to produce our faith we have to grow our faith everyone say grow our faith because faith comes from hearing the word. 
Mm -hmm. And the word is heard and the message is heard through the word about Christ. And that is in Romans, the 10th chapter and the 15th verse. So faith will grow when I hear the word. When you are down and discouraged, encourage yourself. You got to encourage yourself with what? With, with, with the internet? With pornography? Come on, somebody. Am I going to go to TikTok to encourage myself? Am I going to go to Instagram and scroll through pictures to encourage myself? No! Somebody say, no! I'm going to turn to the Word of God. Hallelujah, somebody. And I declare today that the devil is a liar. And the truth is not in him. We have the victory in Jesus Christ. It is the word of God. See, when the word of God comes upon us, we get the victory. Our faith increases. Faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. My faith is increased. And when I have increased faith, I can do what God told me to do. When I have increased faith, I can speak to the mountains. When I have increased faith, I can say, Lord, you are my strong tower. When I have increased faith, though the arrows fly by night and the swords by day, I shall not be moved because the Lord is on my side. I said we need the increase of faith because faith is not what I see. Faith is what I believe. When you walk by faith and not by sight, you'll be able to have the victory. They always ask me, Pastor, why are you so jovial? Why are you are always upbeat and everything happening around you? It's because I got faith in the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I have faith in the power of the Holy Ghost. See, I learned a long time ago. If I exercise my faith, just like I exercise in the gym, just like I exercise my muscles. Is Brother Sam in the house today? I don't see him. I saw him last night. He said, Pastor, I'll be at church. But Sam was walking around like this. I said, Sam, it looks like you got a Superman suit on. I said, you so big, man, you're going to blow up <laughs> and flow and do this big. I said, Sam, how did you get there? He says, well, my back is better, Pastor, so now I can get back in the gym. And now that I can get back in the gym, I can put on the mask again. And then let me tell you how I'm thinking. I'm thinking right now. You're saying to yourself, I can't make it. I'm weak. My body is all messed up. I, my mind is messed up. My spirit is messed up. Get back to the faith, Jim. Get back to the word, Jim. And you're going to watch yourself blow up. You're going to start walking on water. You're going to start releasing your faith. You're going to start believing God for wonders and signs and signs and wonders. You're going to start walking, hallelujah, as the eagles will flow. Hallelujah, though those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and never faint. And I'm believing God today that we're going to mount up under the fresh wind of the Holy Ghost and we're going to take back our city. We're going to take back our nation for Jesus. We're going to take back our church for Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. There were signs and wonders when they came together. And the church needs to get power again. The church can't keep looking and reacting the way the world. Somebody said something bad about you. Hey, hurt your feelings. You just get over it and say, I love you anyhow. Hallelujah, somebody. Well, I ain't going to talk to her. I ain't going to talk to him. Stop acting like the world. Act like you're born again. You are a new creature. All things are passed away. I am a new creation in Jesus Christ. I'm not going to live like the world. I'm not going to react like the world. I'm going to react like Jesus. I'm going to react. He says, love those who persecute you for my name's sake. You are blessed. 
blessed and highly favored. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. Hallelujah. It may not feel right. It may not look right. But I said you're blessed and highly favored. Whoa, hallelujah. Whoa, somebody say hallelujah. I said I'm blessed. I said I'm blessed and highly favored. Oh, God, I know I heard, Lord, that you're still moving in the midst. Look at somebody and say, I heard that God is still moving. Yes, some will die. Some will go to heaven. But the Lord is still healing. He's still delivering. He's still setting us free. And that is because we have faith and we are blessed. Hallelujah. Somebody say, we are blessed. Mm. I'm a blessed man. I've been blessed by my wife. I've been blessed with three beautiful kids. Been married to Madeline, who's on vacation right now, but I'm not hating her. She's been married. I'm not hating on her. She's enjoying the pool. She's enjoying the sun. She's enjoying the, my son and our son. But you know what? I've been blessed to have her for 37 years in my life. I've been blessed to see my kids grow up. I've been blessed with a grandson. I've been blessed to own houses and land. I've been blessed to travel the world. But all of those blessings, I said all of those blessings, pale in comparison to the blessing of the Lord. To my soul being saved, my life being changed, me being delivered from the muck and mire of sin. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessing of changing my life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, God. Can I tell you a secret? I was reading the Borner studies. Only 26% of Americans say they read their Bible on a daily basis. And the Lord got me stuck on the word right now. I was supposed to move on to the point two, but I'm not going to move on to point two today. Because the Lord is keeping me planted right here. I want you to make a commitment today and say, I'm going to read the word daily. Can I get a witness right now? Say, I'm going to read the word of God daily. I'm going to meditate on the word all the way in the back. Say, look, look, look. Let the word of the Lord be in your hearts. Come on, meditate on it day and night. Say, I will meditate. Say it with me. I will meditate on the word of the Lord day and night. That means you got to put it in you. That means you got to read it. You want your faith to increase. You want to see signs and wonders and wonders and signs. Put the word in you. Say, Lord, saturate me with your word. Somebody say, saturate me with your word. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 119, your word is a light, a lamp. And to my feet, in a light, into my path, your word, oh Lord. Somebody say, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Your word will keep me, Lord. It is the word of God that will keep us from falling. We got to get into the word, church. We got to get into the word. Somebody said we got to get into the word. Everybody stands at this time, please. It is the word of God that will set us free. It is the word of God that will usher in the fresh wind of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, if you're watching at home, if you're here in this place and you need Jesus in your life, you're saying, I, I, I know what you're saying, Pastor. 
I, I've been strained from the word. I've been reading everything, looking at everything except the word of God. Because that's what the enemy will desire for you to do. Because when he takes the word away from us, what happens is we lose our power. The dudamus power. I'm going to get to that, the fresh wind. We lose, we don't embrace the fresh anointing of the Lord when we get away from the word. We don't react the way Jesus would have us react when we get away from the word. But it's the word that will keep me from falling. It is the word that will strengthen my heart. It's the word that will break every chain in my life. And so right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if there is someone here today who don't know Jesus, Lord, I ask that you would speak right now. If someone is looking online and you're saying, I don't know Jesus, or you're looking by TV right now, it's going to be a replay on TV at some point, and you're looking. I want you to call the church office at 503-287-9567. Call a number on your screen. But right now, in this place, if you don't know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins, every head bow, every eye close, I want you to say, Lord, I'm making, it a, I'm making a decision for you. I'm making a life change moment right now, God, that you would come into my life and fill me with the Holy Ghost, baptize me, saturate me, that I may be delivered from sin, be delivered from the world that I would have the victory today. If that's you, don't worry about anybody else. Just raise your hand today. If you're receiving Jesus, I see your hand, ma'am. Will there be others who say, yes, I want to receive Jesus today. This is your opportunity. Maybe you want to be baptized. Next week we will be baptizing. Maybe you want to join the church. If that's you, I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama, with this vicious racist, with this governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted 
Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain. And the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the south with. With this faith. We will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. And this will be the day, this will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning, my country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. And when this happens, when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village in every hamlet, from every state in every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last.